Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. I am very excited uh, to share a lot of information with you guys. This is the workshop on how to be a competitive medical school applicant, and we have lots of information to share. Um, as you can see, we've got a bunch of smiling faces here. These students have been through it all. Myself and Seku, Seku Smith is here with me. We are both uh, assistant directors of admissions here at AUC and um, we've got lots to share. So I'm just gonna get right to it. Give me one moment. And okay, so like I said, I have Seku Smith with me. He is also an assistant director of admissions. Do you wanna introduce yourself, Seku? Good afternoon, everyone. It's definitely a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Seku Smith. I'm one of the associate directors of admissions here, and I'm definitely looking forward to sharing some information with you guys and having an, an exciting webinar. That is the truth. We've got some really exciting info, and um, I hope you have some notebooks uh, next to you because these are some really important tips that we've experienced interviewing and working with students over the years and kind of gathering some information based on what went right, what went wrong during application process and uh, the application process and interviewing and things like that. So um, first I wanna explain a little bit about AUC. Um, let's see here. Okay, so you can see on my slide, I've got some numbers and I've got some bullet points I wanna run through. A little bit about our school. So you obviously know we are AUC, American University of the Caribbean. We are based in St. Martin and um, we have a US-based curriculum. So it is comparable to that of a US medical school. And what differentiates us is really that small class size. You're going to get a real family feel when it comes to our campus, our, our size. I believe it's five to one ratio of students to professors. So you'll be able to really get that one-on-one -on -one experience that you're looking for when it comes to student support, academic advising, clinical advising as well. So all those sorts of things, you'll definitely get some personalized attention from our highly qualified faculty. So they are there to help you. They are really student focused and that I think is something people want when they go to medical school. So we make sure to keep that pretty streamlined. And then our campus is modern. We've got state of the art technology there. We also have a cadaver lab. We have, um, of course, the wet lab, the dry lab, all of those campus facilities, research opportunities and um, all of those things. You can always ask questions. And just before I, I forget, please enter any of the questions that you have in the chat box below. So we will be answering those questions at the end of the webinar. So anything that comes up during this presentation, shoot that message into the webinar chat box. We will definitely get to it. And then, um, yeah, so we do have clinical rotations all throughout the country, as well as in the United States. And we have some global health electives for those of you who think maybe a little bit more beyond St. Martin is something you're interested in. We have opportunities for you as well. Uh, we do have 7,000 plus, I think it's like 7,500 right now, uh, out there in the world working around you. And those 25 clinical sites, of course, we have the students passing through there and eventually working. But the number you see there, the 92%, is something we're really proud of. 92% of our students actually attained residency on their first try. We've been uh, seeing our students going into competitive specialties and really doing well, and you'll probably see them out there working near you. Uh, so if you do, make sure you ask them lots of questions, hear, hear about their experiences. They're always really happy to talk to you. Um, all right, and a little bit more about those residency outcomes. So you can see our hearts are in family medicine, internal medicine, but we definitely see some competitive specialties like anesthesiology, uh, general surgery, radiology, and sometimes those alumni actually join us in different webinars. So keep your eye on the webinar list on our homepage uh, or on our website because we do keep those up to date, um, similar to how you logged on here. But yeah, so you will find 38 mm -hmm. states filled with our alumni and students. So let's um, move into this. So you can see here that the UK graduate entry program is another route for international students. So international students can go either to St. Martin or to the United Kingdom, but it kind of gives them an option 
uh, to diversify, of course, their, their resume and their experience. But that's a little bit of a breakdown, uh, just so you know of how the whole program works. Both campuses are the exact, I mean, they're basically the same. They're the same curriculum, the same resources, the same amenities, all of those things that you need in medical school, just two different locations. So uh, if you have questions about that, feel free to drop them in the box as well. Um, we do accept international students, so if you're an international student, you can definitely be sure uh, someone here can talk to you about your possibility of applying to AUC. So what we're really here for, um, what to look for in a candidate. Um, this is probably some, you guys are probably here right now because you're looking to apply to medical school and um, there's a lot that we look for and there's a lot of course on paper and a lot off of paper that we look for. So we're gonna get into those uh, different bullet points now. So why don't I drop this over to Seku? Seku, what do you think about um, the first thing that we look for in the application process or maybe how can students get their application started? Gotcha. <clears throat> well, thank you, uh, Monica, for, for, um, for the introduction and everything. And first of all, once again, I do wanna say that I'm super excited to be here to be able to share this information and serve as a resource for you guys that are getting ready to start applying to medical school or will be applying to medical schools in the future and so forth. So as I stated earlier, my name is Sekou Smith and I am the Southeastern Associate Director of Admissions here for AUC. AUC has been around for over 40 years now and me personally, I've been with AUC now for close to 13 years. So the majority of my professional career has been spent at AUC. And one of the things that you're gonna find about just our, what's in our DNA amongst the employees, amongst our students and so forth, is that we have a passion you know, for AUC and we really love our institution. So that's why I've been here for so long, Monica and every and all our students and so forth. So as the Associate Director of Admissions, one of my responsibilities is that I conduct interviews for the applicants that are applying to AUC. And as the Associate Director of Admissions, I work closely, or we work closely, uh, Associate Directors of Admissions, we work closely with our admissions committee. So we know exactly what they're looking for and what's important to them as, uh, as they get ready to make a decision based on their holistic inter uh, review process. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later on. So as we go through this presentation, make sure that you guys are submitting questions because we're definitely gonna to get to the Q&A and we don't wanna leave anything out that may be important to you. So one of the first bullets that you see there is the personal statement. And this is a very important piece of your application process. Why? Because this is your first impression to the admissions committee. One of the things my mom always raised me on and saying is say, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. So things that are gonna be, is very important that you articulate, number one, your reasons and your motivation for wanting to go to medical school, all right? Be prepared, be prepared to discuss yourself, your motivation, why you wanna do it, and, and really elaborate on that because this gives you an opportunity to have a voice to the admissions committee. So be open with the personal statement and you don't wanna necessarily use this time, you, you wanna use this entire time to reflect on yourself, your past, um, your experience and shadowing. I've had students discuss uh, uh, challenges that they've had in their home country before moving to the United States and how that motivated them to wanting to go into medicine. So you wanna use this time to really speak on yourself. You know what I mean? This is your voice. So really get out there and discuss it and, and really uh, elaborate on it You know, during your, per uh, your personal statement. This will not, your personal statement won't be the best time to really talk about maybe academic challenges or reasons for your GPA or anything, you wanna solely focus in on your motivation for wanting to go to medical school. Now, if you've done something academically and it contributes to your, your reason for wanting to pursue medicine, then you definitely wanna use that. But you don't wanna say, well, my freshman year, I didn't do good in class because I didn't I didn't get tutoring. That's not the time for that. You'll be able to discuss that in an interview, but the interview is your time. This is speaking about you. I tell students a lot of times, what would you say about yourself? You know, and, and, and I know sometimes that's very hard and everything, but you're putting it on paper. So definitely get out, talk about yourself, brag about you know yourself and 
and impress the admissions committee. Let them know that you're truly motivated for medicine and you didn't you don't just want to go to medical school because your mom has told everyone over Thanksgiving dinner since you were two that you're going to be a doctor. You really want to show your motivation of why you want to go to medicine. All right. For if you if you need assistance with it, and it is it's okay to get out and search for help. And 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 when you're doing these personal statements, give to professionals that have had to do it before. Your your professors at school, your your primary care physician, a friend, a family member, a mentor, any advice that you can have, because sometimes you may leave things out and they may say, Hey, what about when you did that? So explain everything about yourself of how and what's igniting that passion. For you to want to go into medicine uh, for yourself. So um, number two, uh, sorry, not number two, but another point that I do want to touch on is grammar and spell checking. Write this personal statement more than once. Sometimes I, I have to do, even for personal reasons, if I'm going to do something, I have to write it down and write it again and write it again just so that I make sure it's per that it's perfect. Because again, you don't want to, when, when you're applying to medical school, you want to make sure that all the, all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. You don't want to leave anything out. So write, rewrite it, spell check, go call an English teacher or something. Just make sure that you're that you have everything structured in the way you will want to present yourself. When you're getting ready to apply to AUC and in our application, you actually see different prompts and so forth of, of things that you can uh, add into your personal statement as you're as you're preparing it. So Use this personal statement to speak volumes about yourself. Your personal statement is your initial commercial. So this is going to advertise you. All right. So let's move next to transcripts and everything. Now, um, one of the things that for AUC, for our admissions requirements that we're looking for, the, 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 the question is, what do we look for in a candidate? And when I'm in front of students and I'm presenting at schools, the first thing I, I, I say to students every time is that AUC is looking for a serious student that is able to dedicate, that is willing to dedicate everything that they have, their life, everything to a career in medicine. So that's number one, all right? You have to make sure that you have a reason of wanting to go into medicine because there are gonna be a lot of sacrifices that you're gonna to have to make in your personal life to, to have an impact, to, to help society and to help your patients and everything. So you have to be very serious about it. So number one, for AUC, when you're getting ready to apply, we do require the completion of a bachelor's degree. Now you can start your application, but you won't be able to enroll until, you know, it's contingent upon you uh, completing your bachelor's degree. So AUC will accept credits from all regionally accredited, accredited institutions. And so, but if you have questions about it, our phone lines with the ADAs, we're always open to helping you in any questions that you may have um, when you're starting to think, when you're starting, uh, when you're thinking about credits and so forth. So for the prerequisite courses, students are required to submit, uh, you're required to have one year of biology with a lab, that's bio one and two, one year of general chemistry, with a lab, Gen 1, Gen 2, organic chemistry, one year, uh, organic one and organic two, and then you need one full semester of physics, okay? Uh, so for the physics, if you wanted to substitute it, you can substitute it with a math-based statistics or calculus course um, for yourself. So, um, and so those are the basic prerequisites. But I always tell students, if you have an opportunity, test yourself and challenge yourself while you're in undergrad and take courses beyond the basic prerequisites to really see and to and to so that when you do start medical school it won't be a big shock or you're not totally surprised and everything you're comfortable you know what challenges you know what adjustments you need to make it'll help you build self-awareness of when you need help when you need tutoring when you need to speak to professors and so forth so um so um take advantage of of, of all of that you know for yourself um, number number two, something else I was going to talk about is that um, the admissions committee, um, we are not just looking at a number as far as GPAs, because students ask me about what's the minimum GPAs and so forth. The number one thing our admissions committee wants to make sure when we're evaluating you, we want to make sure that we're bringing in a qualified student that has the ability to excel 
in a medical school curriculum. So we don't necessarily just look at a number because it doesn't tell everything about you. So we wanna look at academic trends, upward trends, downward trends, a semester where you may have had a challenge or, or you may have had some hiccups um, uh, for a, a certain semester. And so, you know, for yourself. So you, um, you wanna um, use that time to really discuss all of that for yourself. So um, it's not, we're not just about a number. We wanna evaluate the student overall. So use that. So when you're looking at, when you're in your interview, you'll have an opportunity to speak on that and talking about upward trends and, and, and so forth and, and, and anything, your entire academic history, all right? So we're looking more than just at a, a certain score we want to make sure we know we're going to look at the holistic view from freshman to, to senior year. All right. Uh, something else that it's OK to discuss in your interviews when you're talking about those different trends of yourself. Talk about times when you had to seek help or you had to receive tutoring and how you overcame challenges. How did you evolve? You may have had some hit up in your first semester, but by the senior year, you were like a stellar student. So we want to we want to discuss that. We want to be able to present that to the admissions committee, all right? And one thing I, I do wanna backtrack a little bit, just talking about the requirements and so forth, as far as the type of degree that we're looking for. Um, years ago, I know everything, you had to make sure that you have a degree in biology, but a lot, a lot has changed throughout the world. So when you're getting ready to apply to AUC, you don't necessarily have to have a biological science degree or anything in the hard, in the hard sciences. The best thing that I see that AUC offers is that we will accept different degrees, you know, different types of, so you wanna find a program that will allow you to complete your bachelor's degree along with completing the prerequisites. So I find, I like for example, Florida State University, I, I see a lot of students going into kinesiology because they wanna learn more about the structure of the movement of the muscles and so forth as they're getting to prepare for medical school. So, but they are also allowed to, to take um, uh, their prerequisite courses and so forth. So find a program that you're passionate about and that, that you're truly interested in and you excel better that way than taking something, uh, you know, animal biology or something like that. And you're not really interested and you're just doing it to get into medical school, but you're not excelling because you don't, you're not really interested in what you're learning. You're just trying to get a grade. So it'll be better for you to focus in on finding a program or a major that you truly, truly connect with, okay? Um, and then moving on from there, next we will require the MCAT. Monica, you wanna talk a little bit about the MCAT requirements? Yeah, definitely. And everything you say, I mean, it is so true. You have to study what you love. You have to figure out what's gonna get you through those four years, learning the most, experiencing the most and being able to enjoy those four years of school or however fast you do it or if you take a little bit longer if you go back to school um, but get those prerequisites done of course that's something you may enjoy as well the sciences um, but yeah the MCAT that is something you're all probably thinking about if you haven't already taken it already it's definitely a lengthy exam and it requires a lot of stamina which means it requires a lot of practice and um, it's like training for a marathon. You have to really break it into pieces, think about how you're gonna study. I recommend more than, I would say at least, at least three to four months minimum uh, studying for this exam. You definitely want to uh, maybe get some of the Kaplan books or certain books that, that are accessible to you. If you can find some used ones, that's great. Uh, it's, Obviously, they're they're a little bit more on the expensive side. You can always find used ones. Some libraries have them. Uh, there are plenty of resources online for free that you can use, or maybe a discounted price depending on where you go to school. They may have some programs and classes. Um, and there's always the the courses, the prep courses that you can use. But for students who may not take the MCAT, maybe you're an international student or you're living in another country, there are uh, alternative exams. So the GAMSAT, for example, the NEAT, there are a couple of exams, different ones in the United Kingdom. So if you have a question about the exam that, that you're using right now or that you're thinking to take, reach out to us because we'll definitely be able to prep you and say, eh, we need you to do this one or yes, this is totally fine just so you can clear your mind and make sure that you're on the right path. Um, 
We also will look at all of your scores from the MCAT over the past five years. Your MCAT will most likely expire in five years, so we will have to see all of the scores that you've completed within the past five. Um, we will look at the different subsets. Um, there are definitely going to be some subsets that are looked at a little bit heavier, but I would say if you've taken different exams, we'll look at different subsets of different exams just to kind of get a grip on what you were trending in, how you did, maybe what were some weaknesses, and we're going to ask you about these things. And we'll talk about that when we get to the interview, how we ask about what went right and what went wrong and maybe why the MCAT was challenging for you or why it was a piece of cake. Um, I mean, if it's a piece of cake, that's awesome. Uh, that is a difficult exam. Um, but like I said, the practice exams, the questions, the practice questions, the AAMC website has a ton of great information for you. But um, right now, because of COVID-19, um, a lot of lives have been put on hold. A lot of plans have been put to a stop. And I know that the MCAT has been one of those for many of you. And for this January term, January 2021, because we are still accepting applications, um, the U.S. Department of Education has made the MCAT waivable for IMG schools. So we are able to waive that exam if you look to start this January. Now, to see if you qualify for that waiver, get in contact with us. We'll have a conversation about it and um, hopefully get you started on this on this journey so keep that in mind reach out the mcat is a requirement starting for may and september of 2021 so if you have plans to take it take it if you have plans to take it for this january take it um it is a good exam we we do heavily and we we require it on a normal year but we all know that this year has been a little i don't even know how to describe it <laughs> 2020 um but it's if you have any questions about it, just reach out. But the MCAT exam is a tough one. We're here for you, ask questions. And let's talk about letters of recommendation. But before, Seku, do you have anything to, to add to the MCAT info? No, for the MCAT, just one thing. Uh, if you, I know we are waiving it this year uh, for, for, for the January semester, but as you're preparing to take it in the future, just one tip um, that, that I've got from students that have taken it that were successful in, Make sure that you practice uh, or focus in on practice exams. That's just one little tip that I've received from a lot of students that have helped them um, um, in their performance on the MCAT uh, in comparison from the first to the second time. So just make sure that you're setting aside time um, to, to make sure that you're getting in your practice exams. Something else, I've had a student, I did an interview the other day and a student told me that during their practice exam, they set up their room or whatever area in their house as a testing center, they wanted to simulate it. They were taking it. They set an early morning time, whether it was in their kitchen or den, and they set their, their clock for the night the night before. They woke up the next morning. They got fully dressed, um, took a shower, ate and everything, brushed up on some study tips and everything, went into the room, set for the MCAT, didn't move, you know, for the full time, and every, or set for the practice exam for the full time to just kind of simulating the, 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 the testing environment. Because when you get for the MCAT, I guarantee you for the first time, it is going to be a shock. When you yeah. look at those questions and everything, it is going to shock you because it's not going to be the same questions that you will receive in biology class. It's going to be totally different. It's going to be structured a little different. So it kind of helps you gain an understanding of the structure of the exam, what's going to be expected of you, looking at the types of questions. So those are just some tips that will definitely help you set that environment. And one thing, I've, I know sometimes you're kind of pressed with time and everything, but spend about three to four minimum months to prepare for this MCAT because there is a lot weighing on it. You know what I mean? You, you, you're trying to get into all you know different medical schools. And so, so, so that's something that you want to you know, make sure that you do for yourself. So that, that's it for me, Monica, as far as uh, on the MCAT. Perfect. No, I, I definitely agree with all of that. And I would say when it comes to time and being, I don't know, just timely about this process, another thing is those, it's those letters of recommendation. You have to be timely with those. You want to, I have a couple of tips, but first, think about this now. Think about the people that you want to ask for these letters of recommendation. Even if you're a freshman in college, get to know your professors, go to office hours, talk to them, get to know them, and 
maybe in a conversation say, you know what, I would really appreciate if one day when I'm applying to medical school that you would write my letter of recommendation. And that is not only kind of an honor to them to be able to provide that for you, but it shows that you are thinking proactively and mm. that will be on their mind and they'll know how important it is to you, meaning they may not turn it in two weeks late and um, not get it to you until it's absolutely last minute. And that becomes a problem for you. And you don't want to be the one knocking on their door 24 seven, like, is my letter of recommendation in? So definitely <laughs> think about this before you are doing that. Um, and another thing too, ask them with ample amount of time. You, If you know it's going to be due in three months, tell them, I need this by um, let's say it's due in December, say, can you have this to me by November 1st? This way, they at least have weeks to do it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to really wait for them in, in order to turn it in. It's going to be like timely. It's on your watch. You can say, okay, hit the send button to this address and they can send it because they've already written it. Um, being timely on that is is key. And like I said, build that relationship with them early and they'll have good things to say. And be be careful with who you pick too. You don't wanna go up to a professor that you've maybe taken one class, you sat in the back of the classroom, you didn't talk to them, didn't raise your hand. You wanna be asking those professors that really made a connection with you when you were in school. And then we also take a professional letter of recommendation. So not just an academic one, you would need a professional one. Um, and that can be someone that you've worked with. It can be somebody who supervised you and maybe can see your work ethic and demonstrate a couple of skills that you had. Um, right. And you want to ask them too. You definitely want to ask them uh, ahead of time because they're busy people. You probably know what they do on the daily and they may have a family at the end of the day, they go home and they have lots of stuff going on and they have to sit down and write it too on their own time. So definitely be proactive. That's my tip for that one. Um, and with that, another document that's very important for us is the resume, the, the resume or the CV. So with that, right now, we are accepting the AMCAS or AM, AMCAS or the ACOMAS or ACOMAS, however you pronounce it. Um, we are accepting both of those uh, applications right now. So if you have those, that kind of takes the place of a resume. But if you are writing a resume, that's very helpful for us to have on hand. And it should be kind of similar to the personal statement. Um, it should be organized. It should be well thought through. It should not have any grammar mistakes. It should be all aligned. And you have mentors, I'm sure, at school that can help you with that. There are plenty of services on campuses around the country, I know, that have great like career service centers and resume building support. These people are there to help you utilize these resources now. Um, and if you don't, pass it on to maybe someone you know that works with you or looks at resumes often. Um, they can help kind of with the formatting of everything, but it should be in chronological order. If you've had professional experience in the medical field, definitely think strategically of how you're placing these items on your resume. Um, I've known that when you're applying different places, you may have different resumes for different things to kind of highlight what that one place might be looking for. So we definitely uh, have a lot of student involvement on our campus. We definitely have a lot of opportunities to volunteer and get involved in the community in St. Martin. So maybe if you've done some of those things, we want to see it. So let's make the connection there with your resume and what we're doing here at AUC. Um, now, how to add things to the resume is another kind of uh, hurdle right now with COVID. Um, I know a lot of you probably want to get shadow experiences. A lot of you are looking to get scribing positions or maybe just a job to get you through COVID and pay a bill. Now, it's hard for everybody, and I understand, and we all understand here at AUC, we, we hear about this a lot. Um, you, you definitely have opportunities to do other things than just the formal um, working positions. So right now, for example, aside from like scribing, volunteering in hospitals, all these medical like clinic opportunities, you can maybe pick up groceries for your neighbors. You can find a company that's maybe helping deliver prescriptions. I've heard that before. Um, I've had people uh, who are working virtually from their home for a clinic and just 
taking the phone calls and scheduling the appointments. All of these things are possible and if you cannot absolutely if you absolutely cannot find something virtual or kind of doing the good deed of like running groceries for the elderly or maybe someone who's um, at risk during this pandemic, there are other opportunities like um, learning something new. I, I mention this a lot in um, some of the events that I do. I say, learning how to adult is really hard. Learning how to do your own accounting, your own budgeting, your own financials are difficult, as, especially if it's your first time doing it. Maybe you picked up a new book and a new skill, played a new instrument, learned a new language, what it may be. COVID is a time for you to really, uh, I don't know, quarantine or COVID or 2020 this year is really here to kind of give you also, um, we have a lot of opportunity to make time uh, I guess just this free time, I guess for many of you, um, workable, I don't know if you have a, a better word for it than me. Um, but there's, there's opportunity to learn new things here. So if you say that to us to an, in an interview, we'll definitely understand and hear it. Um, we prefer that you have, of course, experience. So if you've gotten involved on campus, if you've done any extracurriculars, research is a big one. Um, we don't require any amount of number, like hours, for you to be doing anything. But if you show it, I mean, it's definitely showing that you're interested in medicine. So if it's a pre-health group or a scribing position, we want to see those types of things, of course. Um, and I guess not many people add this to the resume. And I don't know if we really talked about this in the personal statement. Um, but if you're like a caregiver as well for maybe someone in your family, that's another thing you can mention in an interview, um, in your personal statement, those types of things. If you care for your grandparents or a parent, a sibling, you can always talk to us about those things. Um, Absolutely. And I think that's my list of things that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, Seiki, do you have anything to add? Yeah, um, and just everything you were saying, I definitely agree with that. And for for you students that are thinking about applying, this is your resume. This is you want to use this opportunity to highlight everything about yourself. You know, everything that you've done. Don't leave anything out. I've had an, I had an interview a couple of maybe a couple of months ago, but I was during the interview and students said, "Oh, I was like, did you do any shadow? Like, yeah, I did shadow me and went to running things off." And I'm like but it's not listed on the resume. And the first thing they were saying, they were like, oh, I thought that you guys were Caribbean medical school, so you probably didn't want it. And <laughs> we, when you're applying to AUC, you want to take this as just as serious as if you're applying stateside. You of would course. list everything where you're applying on your AMCAS application. So you're applying to AUC, our admissions committee takes it just as serious. So if you're leaving things out that aren't on the resume, I don't want to present it to the, I'm not going to present it to the admissions committee. Because now it's kind of a red flag, like, oh, I just thought about it, or I underestimated AUC, or I'm not really serious about it. So use this opportunity to highlight everything that's important to you. Something else that Monica touched on real quick, she was talking about, you can do volunteering, you can do research, you can do uh, shadowing, you can do, you know, a lot of different things. And, and so, so AUC, our admissions committee does not put a, a, a target or a number or a time that you need to do it. When I'm speaking to students, they were like, well, what do we value most and so forth? And I'm speaking right now about AUC. And so I tell them our admissions committee wants you to go and, and get involved with things that you're passionate about. You know what I mean? If you, I have students that are passionate about research, they wanna work in the lab, they love the, the lab, the laboratory environment. And so go for that. I have students that love community service, go for that shadowing, seeing, you know, working in a clinical setting, really get an opportunity to understand the rigors. Go for all of that because, our, like, I, like we stated earlier, our admissions committee wants to take a holistic view of everything. And so we want to, every, every single item that we're talking about right now, you want to use those as, as, as ammunition or, or things to kind of promote you as an individual. So find what you're passionate about um, um, and go for it. You know what I mean? When you're getting ready to, to build your resume. Do not leave anything out. Speak a brag about yourself. Use your resume to 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 be your to boost yourself. Definitely. And to go off of like all of that and everything we've talked about so far, I mean, this time 
that we have as a student, especially if you're virtually learning right now, this is a really good time to show up to office hours, get to know those professors, get to ask mm -hmm. them what they know. What do they know about the field? What can you do to help them? Um, or what can you do to help in the university? Different things there, you'd be so surprised with the amount of opportunity that is out there if you just ask. And um, undergraduate schools, like just universities, there are so many opportunities to make you a better applicant to get to where you are right now. So if you have questions about if something is good to put on a resume or not, go to them, they're gonna be helpful to you. Um, and, and we're here, of course, to support you in this application process. Absolutely. And um, I think that's and where we One can more thing I wanna add, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, Michael, just one more no. thing that I, that I did want to add um, is, uh, do, 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 do. I totally forgot what I was gonna say. Go ahead, move forward. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember it, just bring it up. No big deal. I will. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the interview. Um, this is this is a big one, and I think this is something here at AUC we really value. And of course, Sekou's mentioned it a, a couple of times. We look at a student holistically. We look at every single piece and part of this application that you present to us, and the interview is the moment for you to tell us what we don't see on paper. So yeah. I always say in my in the beginning of my interview, I don't know if anyone who's on here has ever, like they'll probably say that I'm a broken record, but this is a time for me to get to know you based off of what I can't see here. I wanna know you, I wanna know your character, I wanna know the things that you do when you're stressed, like do you like to go running or do you like to paint? Um, do you like to do makeup or do video tutorials on math? I don't know, whatever is your thing. Um, those are the things we wanna know, but it also gives you those times to, to talk about what went right, what went wrong. So Sekou, do you wanna kind of channel into the the interview portion of the Absolutely. application? Absolutely, and just like uh, Monica said, this is your live interview. This You've done the commercial with your personal statement and submitting all the application and bragging about yourself, and this is your time when you're going live. Uh, to to us ADAs and we're doing the interview. So the number one thing, first off, before anything, students, please be prepared, scripted, uh, uh, tested, uh, um, you know, practice the night before, go to Google and get some interview questions and pretend or have your little brother or someone, you know, <laughs> ask you those questions and see how you will respond to those. You know, you don't want to get in the interview and saying, hold up one second, let me go and grab my resume and, or hold up uh, uh, or the or, or, or your, your speaker isn't up or anything. Test your environment. Be prepared for the interview. Number two. And then uh, number two um, also in the interview. Again, this is an impression of you. So you want to dress professionally. That is going to be very important. Again, with AUC being an offshore medical schools, a lot of times students take it lightly. And I've had students show up to interviews with a t-shirt on. Now we, ADA, we're a little bit flexible. I mean, AUC, we're a little bit flexible. We've had, because we're doing virtual uh, interviews, we've had students that may be at work in scrubs in the middle of the day. Hey, Mr. Smith, I couldn't run home real quick, but I, I was able to get into an office or you're at work. We're flexible with that, but if you don't want to do an interview sitting at a park with a t-shirt on and you have noise and, and, and chaos going on in the back. You want to look to part, you want to be professional and, and as, if, as, you know, as if you're going for a job interview. You want to put on those same uh, uh, different things. Um, know what type of interview you're going to have uh, for yourself. Would it be a one-on-one -on -one interview? Are you going to be meeting with a group panel? Um, uh, will it be virtual? Are you going to be online and so forth? So, you want to make sure that you're identifying. So all this comes under the umbrella of being prepared and doing your research prior to the interview to make sure that when you go in, in for the interview, you are standing out. You're letting everything out that you want to say about yourself. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's the only thing that's popping in my mind that this is your commercial. This is you advertising you. You know what I mean? And when you look at the, if you look at your commercial, what do you want to say? You don't want to go back after the interview like, dang, I should have said this or I wanted to say that. Get everything out, be presentable. Um, um, another thing, um, be yourself. 
don't try to do too much to try to impress, be yourself. Because sometimes I've heard students trying to use certain vocabulary terms that don't even match with the sentence that they're saying and just they're all over the place trying to impress me when I'm like, just be who you are and no one can change that. You know what I mean? So be honest, be open for yourself, um, um, uh, prepared, dressing professionally and knowing what type of interviews that are out there. Also, with technology that's available, it, it, you have a lot of, 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 of support or, or, or resources to use. So get on Google, get on YouTube, um, interview practices or, or, you know, or anything. There's a lot of resources out there that can help you in getting you prepared, you know, for the interview process. Um, Monica, I know I'm talking, is there anything, I don't want to leave anything out. Is there anything that, that you could add to that? There's always stuff. There's always stuff. Of course. Please do. Help me uh, out. <laughs> yeah, no, everything you said is, is right on the nose. And um, along with being prepared, be prepared like in the room, you want to have a nice background. If you have a plant or a picture, that's fine. You don't want like um, your, you don't want your window open and the sirens blowing right next to you. And then you got a dog barking on your leg and X, Y, Z. That is very important. Make sure that you can get into a quiet space. And if you are at work or you are going to be doing it somewhere else, let us know ahead of time. You can always reach out and say, or shoot, shoot us a message, say, Hey, I, like say you said, I'm working, I could only get this room. At least we're prepared as well to know where you're coming from. And then it's not like, oh, they forgot about the interview and just had to do it in their car. Um, mm -hmm. That's really, really important to us. And um, I mean, if if you do feel like you're running late or something like that, let us know. It's, it's so easy to get in contact with any of your interviewers from oh. AUC. Um, it's, it's, okay to, to reach out. Um, dressing, of course, like Seiku said, you should look professional. Head to toe, I always recommend because if you feel the part, you're going to feel better. I, I remember I had a gym teacher in high school who would always say like, look good, feel good. And if you look good, you're <laughs> feeling good and you're ready to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes. And I think if you put the, the shoes on, if that's what makes you feel good, put the shoes on. Um, and sit you you don't want to be moving around and like putting your hands in the air and like doing i don't know maybe shuffling around things make sure your phone's off um Absolutely. All those, yeah all those good things because that's distracting and it throws you off so you're only <laughs> shooting yourself in the foot if if you have your phone ringing and you're like oh wait what was i saying um and, and also no one thing i do want to add to that monica and you, you just popped something in my head was that in addition to all of this, the interviewer is going to be asking you questions and everything, but do your research on the institution to truly show that you're interested in that school. So when it comes to the Q&A, you don't just say, no, I don't have any questions. That just, that's a red flag to say, they're not really interested. They haven't investigated, they haven't done research on the institution to even know where they're going. You know what I mean? So know the institution, do your research and develop questions to ask so that you have a, so when you do decide which institution you are going to intend, uh, attend, it is an informed decision. So you know, you're asked the question and I know that students are going to be applying to hundreds of medical schools. So, and I know you're going to be having a lot of interviews. So you're going to have to do the, a part of being a medical, uh, an MD, like I stated from the beginning, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of sacrifice. And it starts right now on the front end of, yep. of doing your research on why you're, when you're getting ready to apply, when you're a prospect, really investigate the schools and don't just select an institution based on, you know, the advertisement. You do your in-depth research and see how the institution connects with what you're looking for in a medical school. Definitely, okay. definitely. Yes, and, and then one thing I did want to say that I know I moved a little quick when I say my mind went blank, but <laughs> it, it, it can tie into this right here. A lot of the things that, that Monica and I are speaking about today, I know sometimes we're, we, 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 we're a little bit biased and kind of giving information leaning towards AUC and so forth, but make sure you do your research to the different institutions that you're applying to 
and investigating or, or researching what's important to them or to that school and so that you're making sure that you're accomplishing those things when i was talking about the resume and so i, I was meant to leave that into the resume but it goes overall you know what i'm saying for yourself or everything about you know the program and applying to medical school definitely right. and yeah no that's that's yeah, such a good is. point too because we are giving lots of info that can be versatile you can use it in mm -hmm. many places but at the same time of course we're going to speak to what we see every day and what we require but like the personal statement we want you to be creative we want to hear your voice in the writing but other schools may want a different format they may want a word count they may have x y and z uh, criteria that you have to fit but make sure you do your research do your research that's very important um and i think another thing for for you to take for the for the interview is this is a really good first impression of the universities that you're applying to you you want to be interviewing us as well we want to see your interest and that's why the, the questions yes. definitely have questions you can write them down you can say oh i have it here on my computer here are my questions or here i have them in a notepad do you mind if i take them out we're always going to say yes we will always say yes and um that is i mean a moment for you to learn a little bit more about us we don't want obviously don't ask the question that is like the first thing you're going to see on our home page because we would probably hope that you're going to see the first thing on our home page um yes. we're putting out all of our info there um <laughs> but if there are questions about saint martin or questions about residency questions about clinicals sites living xyz that's great um if you ask where is auc located we're in St. Martin, we're in St. Martin. Um, those are some things that we want you to, to already know, but of course you're gonna have questions and be prepared, um, interview us, interview us as a school that you wanna go to as well and, and learn the facts. Um, but I think we really, we covered a lot and I think the interview is a great opportunity for you to talk about what went right, what went wrong, how you trended up, how you grew, how maybe if you had, something in the past, how you overcame it, and um, it's really helpful. So I think this is a, a good point, unless Seiku has anything to add. Um, we can kind of get into the last, I don't know, you can always reach out to us for any questions as well, guys. You can always have us do a pre-evaluation of any of your info. We're, we're happy to work with you. And um, yeah, I think we, to us. we want to help you, we want to be a resource. You don't have to call and say you're applying to AUC. We want to help you. Call us and, you know, reach out to us. We definitely are available. We have ADAs in different uh, locations throughout the United States. And so you'll have me, Monica, and then a host of a few others that are available and willing to help you out. So definitely. Uh, so we, we're here for you. Cool. Well, should all we right. answer some questions? Yes. We, 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 got we, a lot. We, Monica, we can go all day. We have more information. <laughs> we can. We can piggyback this thing all day, so we definitely can go. But yes, I know everyone is short on time, and so we want to definitely get to some of the questions and everything that students are asking. I have one coming in right now, Monica. We have a lot coming in. So yeah. if you think that we do not get to your question, we will spread the questions out to our individual ADAs and, your, and the ADA from your region, from your geographical region, We'll respond to you later on to say, hey, I saw you had a question or anything. And then Monica and I uh, will list our, our emails at the end of the interview, and yep. then you'll be able to reach out to us individually. And please do not hesitate. We want you to call us. Okay, so please, first yeah. question I've seen from a student is saying, if I have a lower GPA, can I compensate in other areas such as a higher MCAT or higher MCAT or experience for yourself? And I would definitely, I would definitely say yes, because we I've had many students that I've spoken to in the past or during an interview where students say, Mr. Smith, I am from small rural uh, Mississippi. And my first uh, experience in college was at NYU in the middle of New York. And I got there and I got overly excited for my first semester and things that, and then second semester. I finally woke up and then, you know, so I was kind of, you know, want to want to show some um, better proof of who I am through my MCAT score and so forth. So 
MCAT will definitely help you in really giving the admissions committee an idea of your potential. Or on the flip side, if you, you know, MCAT wasn't that, if you didn't uh, do that well, uh, GPA, you can definitely show and, you know, and be able, in the interview, you'll be able to discuss, you know, what do you feel, you know, may have happened, you know what I mean, for yourself, you know what I mean? So there are different areas um, that, and that, that's what we were talking about earlier about academic trends. And our admissions committee wants to know how did you get to that number? We don't just want to look at the number. We want to know how did you get there? What happened? Was there something that that, that you have a, a life circumstance that prevented you or or, or anything? We, we want to know everything about the picture. So yes, um, if you have a lower GPA, you can definitely compensate and show your ability in other areas, OK? Yeah, do you see any coming in, Monica, on your end? Yes, I do. And I'm going to jump to one. Okay. that I see here. Um, due to COVID, my research was canceled. Um, would that looked at, will that be looked at negatively um, to have a strong application? I, like, what can I do to have a strong application? So the answer is no, it won't be looked at negatively. Um, we know that COVID, like I said before, um, we all know this has been difficult and there are other things that we can do to to power through this and um, just get yourself in a good place to be learning and doing other things. And I do see here someone else asked a question about I, I made cards for hospice patients since I couldn't visit them. That is definitely something that you can add. We want to know those things. And I think that's so wonderful. First of all, that you that you did that. That is such a nice way to contribute. Um, but you can do other things, research if you've been doing it, tell us what you've done up until then. And when it ended, okay, it ended because of COVID, there's not much you can do. Um, what's your next step? What's your game plan? We always wanna make sure that you're looking forward. Um, yes. You didn't stop applying to medical school if you're in the interview. So you have times to talk about what you did to get yourself to this point. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, but yeah, I love the hospice patient cards. I think that's so nice. Absolutely, that, that will be excellent. So if you have that, definitely include that. Yeah. Um, on another note, Monica, I see some other questions coming in. This one is asking, how does AUC students, uh, it went up a little bit, hold on for one second. How does AUC students deal with the stigmas of being in offshore medical school? And are, do, do, our, do our students, feel like second class um, uh, students and so forth. So like I said, like we started out saying is that AUC was founded over 40 years ago. And since our first graduating class till now, what are we, August, October 20th or 20, whatever, 21st, whatever we are in right now, every graduating class, every student that has been an AUC student, they set the groundwork for the next upcoming class. They showed their dedication to medicine. They 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 may have had some bumps in the road early on, but they when they when they when they were accepted to AUC, they saw that as their second chance. They saw that as their opportunity to truly prove who they are. So a lot of times students have asked me, saying, Mr. Smith, if I'm an offshore medical school student, and I'm going into clinical rotation because with AUC, you're going to be doing clinical rotations in the same sites as US medical school students. So students have asked me, Mr. Smith, do I need to stand out? And I say, heck yes. You know, you definitely want to stand out. Stand out means arriving, er, arriving at 7:30 when everybody else is going to arrive at 8:30. That means leaving at 8 a.m. at 8 p.m. and everybody else is up at 7 p.m. Students have talked about alumni that I've spoken to. They they just said, Mr. Smith. I didn't want to seem, you know, uh, um, overly confident or be aggravated or anything. I just wanted the chief resident to be, I wanted my face to be the last face that the chief resident saw every single day. You know what I mean? So be open to volunteering. Um, one of our alumni said, and when you're doing your rotations, um, know what you're talking about and don't be crazy when you're talking about it. You know what I mean? Don't be... Uh, uh, I don't want to use the term that he used, but just know what you're talking about and don't be aggravating. That's the only word that's coming to my head when you're talking about it. You don't want to be, you know, so so definitely get out for our students. We do not, we we, we don't feel the stigma because we get out and we shine 
and chief residents, they, they look at us for the, our AUC student for the hard work and determination. So that 7,500 that, that Monica listed at the beginning, they set the groundwork for you already. So then now it's time for you to come in, join the AUC family and set the groundwork for future classes. Definitely. Nailed it. Nailed it. You <laughs> nailed it. Um, that, that question comes across my desk all the time. Um, <laughs> It, I mean, it's, of course, it's natural that you have questions and you definitely can call us anytime and we'll talk about it. Um, but I really think that right now that the feedback we get, the the students that come back to, to help us when we need them in admissions to talk to prospective students, um, I mean, they speak about this experience as something that they would never have gotten had they gone somewhere else. And yeah. it's a second option for like, or a second chance, you said, like, it's a second chance. This is an opportunity for you to get this degree that you want to practice in all 50 states. You're licensed to practice in all 50 states without restrictions. And you can do it in the Caribbean. You can do this in St. Martin. And the AUC students really they they do their job and they do it with a smile and it's they have like this positive vibe about them that when you meet them in person you're like wow you want to be a doctor you're here to do your job and there's no like i don't know um like chip they're just they're just happy to be doing what they're doing that's what residency directors have come back and told us so it's it's exciting and i'm i'm glad that you're all here and we're here to answer those questions whenever you have them um uh, i think we have time for one last quick one um, yeah. Let's see. How about um I don't know. Seku, do you have one? I'm looking here. Uh, let me see. I okay. Um for example, uh, okay, I see one come in saying I did not get an academic letter of recommendation because of being out of school for so long. What can I do in this situation? Our admissions committee has a uh, sort of a criteria um, of a certain amount. Of, I can't remember off the top of my head. Is if you've been out of school for a certain amount of time, you can request a, uh, a waiver uh, of the letter of recommendation. However, don't apply tomorrow and tell me I graduated in 2019 and none of my professors know me. That lets us know that you were not being proactive, like like Monica spoke about earlier, as a freshman going and introduce yourself and saying, hey. In a couple of years, I want to apply to medical school. Will you help me in being my, my recommender? It gives that person an opportunity to learn more about you as an individual and, and, and getting as they're preparing to write you that letter. So we do have options, but take every opportunity to try to find letters. If you've been out of school for 10 years or something like that, I can understand that. But one or two years is not an excuse to say, I, I don't have any professors that know me. That means you were not being proactive early on in preparing for this medical school application. So our admissions committee will review a, way, a, a letter written from you if you're asking for a waiver, but it will have to be approved by the admissions committee. Definitely. And I think we're running out. We've got two minutes. I just want yeah. to conclude and I want to say thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Seku. Um, I think that this has been a really great hour and we've shared a lot of information with you all. You can always reach out. I mean, we have a very holistic admissions process and I want you all to know that we're here to look at every piece and part of that application. And if you have questions, reach out. We're here for you. You'll see our emails. Um, let's see, right here you have, um, I guess I forgot that slide. Um, <laughs> oh, that's one of our there's Seku's and there's, whoops, I just lost my PowerPoint. I lost the PowerPoint. Um, but we'll be sure to get it out to everyone. We'll, I think we'll have a listing of the uh, the attendance. And so we'll be able to get out to everyone the um, the um, our emails and so forth and reaching out to you and everything. And just in closing, I know Monica's getting everything wrapped up and everything. So thank you so much for Monica for having me today. And I, I did mention earlier, one thing that just sits on my mind is that you heard me say that AUC was a second chance for many people and so forth, but I don't mean that AUC is a second tier. We're your first choice, all right? So we're available. We have the quality medical education that we want to provide to you. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I'm sorry. I know it's 8 o'clock. So thank you, everyone, for joining thank us. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. We really appreciate your time. Take care. Take care.